They call it the Razor Blade 15 Advanced Model, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, right off the bat, one thing that a lot of people ask is base or advanced model. I would personally pick the advanced model for two main reasons. First and foremost, you get an SD card slot with this laptop. And for on-the-go video editors, photo editors, and artists, this will be helpful for when you're on a shoot, you shoot the pictures, the video, whatever it might be, you can load it into your laptop and immediately start editing dongle free. The second reason I would choose the Blade 15 Advanced over the base model would be the slight extra customization in the command center. Now, on the Razer Blade base that I reviewed, I did not have extra GPU mode customization. All I had was the basic performance modes in regards to looking at the balanced versus custom versus performance mode, which really just helps the fan control. And then you get a little customization in the CPU and GPU. But what I didn't have was full customization of the GPU mode, which allows you to switch to dedicated GPU only. And this actually was a high benefit for 3D modeling. And I'm gonna show you the difference right now on the screen. As you can see coming up on the screen right now is the standard GPU NVIDIA Optimus benchmarks okay then when i switched it to dedicated gpu only here are the results that i got much much better i was very impressed that that switch in the gpu mode was very helpful now that you know my initial impressions on why i would choose this one over the base let's get into some of the things that i didn't cover in my unboxing and first impressions of this laptop which if you're interested in that i'll link it up at the end of this video now first and foremost let's take a look at the color gamut range and here are the results coming up on the screen now If you're looking for a laptop with a great audio experience, this laptop does have upward facing speakers. And here is a quick audio sample for you to listen to the results from that. The keyboard and trackpad on this laptop is great. One of my favorite features of the laptop by far. It has an RGB backlit keyboard, which is nice and bright in dark settings. It has a full size shift key. I am so happy about that. A lot of laptops avoid the full size shift key and go for a shorter shift key to put taller arrow keys. I really don't care about the full arrow keys. I'd rather have these small ones and the full shift key because when I'm typing and I miss that shift key, it drives me crazy. The keyboard is quiet, has a nice short to medium size key press. And overall, I just, I like the layout. It has all the function keys that I need. Pause, play, next song, volume, brightness, keyboard brightness, print screen, delete. It's just, it's a simple and enjoyable keyboard to use. The trackpad is a huge highlight for me. It's large, spacious, it's quiet. You can almost barely hear it. And here's a quick audio sample for both the trackpad and the keyboard so you can hear them in action. And finally, one thing that you want to know about usability would be the webcam. And here's a quick sample of the webcam so you know how you'll be handling all those Zoom calls that have become so regular in daily life. Here is the camera for the Razer Blade 15 Advanced model. You can hear the audio, kind of see the lighting. Like most webcams, it's pretty grainy, but it will do the trick for your meetings as necessary. When it comes to the Razer Blade series, some of the laptops come with glossy screens and others come with matte screens. The Razer Blade 15 Advanced comes with the matte screen, which I highly prefer. When I'm outside and I have a glossy screen, for instance, yesterday I was out at a coffee shop using uh, my 2015 MacBook Pro, and it was hard to see everything on the screen. Like I was reflecting off of the screen, the sun was reflecting off of the screen. These matte screens really help cut down a lot of that reflection and uh, really just external light pollution. I, I, I prefer the matte screen. This is an all aluminum laptop, thin and light. However, the only thing that annoys me about the specific color of this laptop, because of my more oily fingers, I get a lot of fingerprints on this laptop. It's something that I've commented about and a lot of reviewers have commented about a lot. Um, and so one thing you could do is get the Studio Edition to get more of the silver design. However, that's a much more expensive model. So really the choice is yours. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this model, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase to that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, what we have here is the RTX 3080, 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and the i7-11800H. And kicking it off in the performance benchmarks, we're going to look at Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core, and multi-core.
As you can see, this laptop bounced pretty randomly across the charts on where it lined up against the other laptops in its category. But keep in mind that this laptop does have great Geekbench multi-core scores, which, you know, if you're looking to impress the neighbor kid, you're in good hands. But let's get into some real world tests. That's what I favor more and look at 3D modeling with this RTX 3080. This laptop did really good in Autodesk 3ds Max and SolidWorks, and then kind of averaged out in both Autodesk Maya and PTC Creo. So depending on what your use cases are in 3D modeling, those are the results for you there. For the first time ever, and because of your amazing feedback, I now am featuring gaming benchmarks on my channel. I'm really excited to be releasing these now and on future laptops, so just keep an eye out for those. They might not be on every single video, but they're going to be as much as possible from here on out. Once we transitioned into After Effects, this laptop kicked it into top gear and really showed off. Both in the After Effects standard benchmark and the render benchmark, you're in great hands. And I use the Puget Systems render and I use the Puget Systems After Effects benchmark for these tests. Due to Intel Quick Sync and that RTX 3080, this laptop handled Premiere Pro with ease. It had great export times, and you can see those coming up on the screen now. As we transition into playback, 4K playback had zero drop frames, of course, and then we saw amazing playback for 6K B-RAW. I literally noticed no drop frames. It did have drop frames, but I didn't notice them at all, which was very pleasant. Shifting over to DaVinci Resolve, Intel does struggle a little bit with DaVinci Resolve, but because of the GPU in this laptop, you're gonna have great results in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, however, I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve, so it saw a little bit longer export times, but playback in both 4K and 6K are great in DaVinci Resolve with this high-powered RTX 3080. Now, one test I've been enjoying is getting into the command center of these laptops and changing the different fan modes and thermal limitations to see how well the performance does in video editing. And as you can see, those results coming up on the screen now with the varying thermals, fan noise, and export times. Moving on to Photoshop, this laptop scored a 1,007, one of the highest scores I've ever seen on my channel. I feel like these scores continue to climb year over year, which is of course what we wanna see, laptops improving and getting better. So if you're gonna be using Figma, the Affinity Design Suite, or if you're an artist or illustrator using Photoshop, Illustrator, the Adobe Design Suite, you'll be in good hands. Now the third reason I would choose the Razor Blade Advanced over the base model is the battery. In the base model, you'll have a 65 watt hour battery and in the Razor Blade Advanced model, you're gonna have an 80 watt hour battery. So that will help improve your battery life a little bit. Now it's not gonna give you massive battery life like 20 hours of battery in the MacBook Pro M1, but it will give you more on the go capability. So between better battery life, the SD card slot and higher customization in the Razor Synapse, it's why I would choose the Advanced model over the base. However, you are gonna see quite a price hike, so it's really up to you if it's worth the money. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.